How to pour a concrete foundation. If you're a dedicated handyman and enjoy doing projects around your home, it's very likely that you've considered a small building project. One of the absolutely pivotal parts of that process is the foundation. There are a few easy steps to making a foundation which stands the test of time. With a little hard labor, patience, and attention to detail, you will have your foundation poured in no time. Forming the footings for your foundation. Determine the depth of your foundation. Typically these are around 3 feet deep 0.9 meters into the soil. However, there are a number of factors to consider. If you are digging in high moisture soil, you will need to dig further into the ground. The same goes for if your foundation will be near, on a hillside. There is a simple way to test moisture levels in your soil. Scoop an empty coffee can into the soil, leaving 3 inches of space at the top of the can. Fill up the rest of the can with water. Wait until the water soaks into the soil, and repeat. Time how fast it takes the water to soak in. Anything slower than 1 inch per hour means you have very low moisture levels, too. Instead of using home methods of measuring, sometimes it is best to call in a professional. They will be able to provide all of the diagnostics tests which will tell you everything you need to know about the soil you plan to use. They will even be able to measure the flatness of your soil, and whether or not you need to adjust your foundation's height. Lay out a master plan for your foundation. This is critical to do before you get started. You need to contact the proper government officials to give you the proper permits and licenses that will allow you to lay your foundation, and construct your building. You will also need to get the property surveyed by a contractor, who can give you more valuable information about the land you are building on. Clear the area around your foundation. You should clear grass, roots, and any surrounding debris. This is also a great time to use the survey of your property to determine the height of your foundation. If the planned spot for your foundation is not level, use a backhoe, or shovel to level the area off. Call 811. Before you dig any holes, it is important to call 811. This is the dig line and you can use it to request that utility companies come out to the site and mark areas where any pipes or wires might be. This will help to ensure that you do not damage any of the pipes or wires running underground and increase the safety of your project. Call at least a few days before you plan to start digging. Use a backhoe to dig your foundation. You can use a shovel, but it will take longer, and will not be as precise. The hole for your footings has to be bigger than the foundation, at least 2 feet on all sides. The extra room allows for you and whomever you are working with to get in the holes and lay down the footings. The dimensions of the perimeter hole should be at least 2 feet wide by 2 feet deep, preferably 3 feet deep, 8. Remember that you are not digging the entire area for your planned building. You are just digging the perimeter of the building. The area where your building will be is formed in later steps. After you are done carving out the area to lay the foundation, use a shovel to clear out any excess dirt and debris that might still be laying there. 9. Set rebar for your footings. This is critical because your concrete needs support beams, otherwise it will crumble. Buy rebar which fits your planned footings. You can then lift up the rebar by attaching grade pins to them. These can be purchased at most hardware stores. Set your rebar in first. Then add the grade pins on top of the rebar. Set each grade pin about 2 feet apart from one another, and a foot away from the corners. 10. Then lift up the rebar and attach it to the grade pins. There should be a manual hook on the grade pins to attach the rebar. Do not use a tie or string, which can cause damage to the footing. Make sure that the rebar is equidistant from the base of your opening, as it is from the sides. Pour an initial layer of concrete. This layer of concrete should at least come up one foot, if not more. You do not want to make huge walls on top of a small initial layer. The standard is generally 16 to 20 inches of concrete. Make sure to use the correct mixture of concrete. If there is not enough water, or too much mix, the concrete will not dry correctly. 12. How to make concrete. Use a hand float to smooth over concrete. Make sure there are no cracks or crevices left on the surface layer of the concrete. This is important because the concrete walls you will add later need a smooth, even surface to rest on. After the concrete dries, you can use a level to make sure that the area is completely even.